bum 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 joining world hey mr creeper let me help you down there stop you're waiting This is how it should be. All right, hello and welcome back. Last episode, we built this fancy little warehouse here. And in case of you're wondering, uh, below these light gray carpets here, there's a bunch of trip wires or cobwebs. And this brings mob mobs to uh, think there's a hole while well, I can just walk over it and it's relatively safe inside here because of that um, Yeah, we got all of our items here in this storage system, which makes me very happy and between episodes I was thinking about um, Building a tree farm because I'm really running low on wood and This needs to change so I was thinking to put the tree farm back here in our uh, next to our starter house but to be honest having a tree farm behind the living quarters is kind of not working so I could either go here and build it somewhere here on this island but I do have the feeling that we need pretty much all of the space to build factories and stuff later on and I also want to decentralize things a little bit and I was reminded that we started in a jungle and if we take a look at how England got their woods um, during the Victorian age which we're trying to emulate to a certain degree here um, they got a lot of wood overseas because they used a lot of wood for charcoal everything was powered by charcoal back, de back then so it's not impossible to have a wood farm somewhere else as we can chunk load things this is not an issue so i'm thinking of putting our wood farm back here in this jungle or even further up north so we can import the wood uh, via ship and as i do have a way of getting um, phantom membrane some of our villagers are selling me some um, I can build a boat that's actually running on invisible rails, bringing the wood back from overseas to our warehouse. And this is exactly what I'm going to focus on next. So we're somehow getting over there. We're building a big wood farm, providing us with everything we need. Um, and then we're going to build a boat that actually brings all the stuff back here and right into our warehouse. But to be honest, I'm sick and tired of riding the boat over there and back. So until we have some good ships going, I really want to conquer the skies. And for that, I want to build an airship. We do have a massive aircraft in here, so we can, in theory, also build planes and stuff. Uh, I also would like to get a jetpack, but a jetpack actually requires an elytra, and I'm not in the end by far. So let's start with an airship, and for that we just need some sails, which is windmill sails in a bigger patch. Uh, we need an advanced engine, which requires some sturdy sheets, brass sheets, and yeah, pretty much a mini steam boiler as well as a precision mechanism and all the rest is pretty basic. So, let me get everything together and let's build an airship. And I think I need to start with getting some wool because our wool supplies is probably not that big. Let's see. How much wool do we got? Zero. Okay, how much string do we have? 28? Yeah, we're not getting far with that. So let's 
maybe start with a sheep farm instead. Let's see what we can do. And after a little bit of tinkering around, we have our new uh, area for the sheep here right in our old workshop. I need just to patch this hole up. I removed all the create components that we had up, up here. And with this we just need to put in some sheep. And yes, as everything up here for now, this will be totally uh, manual. But having sheep up here is already a good start. I have collected a few sheep when I went uh, exploring earlier and I just put them down here because I didn't have anywhere to go. Let me get all of those and move them in their new home. All right, everybody, follow me. All right, I'll be breeding some sheep, I'll be farming some wool and I'll be back in a minute as soon as I have a little bit more to go on. I think I should have everything together that I need. So let's see if I'm right for that. Let's start with the large sails. I need five of those. So it's a total of 30 windmill cells. And I have 30 of those, which means five of those. Then I need a string. I need an advanced engine that needs a basic engine. Can I just... Yes, amazing. Upgrade that to an advanced one. Um, one seat, which is also really easy to make. And four of these hulls. So then I need just one propeller and two strings. And this should be everything. So let's get up and get crafting. A propeller and the advanced engine. And with the click of the button, let's see. And there is an airship. And as I want to put a little bit of cargo in it, um, I could add some chests in another hull. Um, and I don't really care about the fuel hungry part because I'm going to have a lot of charcoal to burn through in a short while. All right, all right, all right. Let's see. It's really small. This is this is like tiny. Okay, I think I never have to worry about building a big storage room for this one. But if I get in, I get told no fuel. And there is an inventory. This seems like a fuel thingy. There will be weapons at some point and I have upgrade slots, a banner slot and a die slot. All right, let's put in fuel and the propellers start working and I'm flying. That's a really nice little, little village. I like the way the roads are built. There's a lighthouse. Woohoo! Maybe it can help me in the storm. I really hope it's not also an illegal post. No, 
It's not. Very good. Aside from me having a passenger bee, as it seems, I don't know where I picked up this guy. Um, isn't that a beautiful forest to, well, use for our resource generation? I do have an idea by now what I want to do. And it contains this forest, this river here, and this area here for a port. So my plan is to set up our forest or deforestation, our forestry area somewhere around here, maybe somewhere at this, at this lake here. Then ship all the locks down this river until they get to a port here where I will also add a sawmill and where I want to add um, a charcoal factory because, well, charcoal is very important to get uh, for all the industry we want to do and then use a ship to bring it down here towards our um, storage building. So that's what I'm going to set up. I do have a waystone with me. I also set up a waystone here for the storage so I can easily jump back and forth and don't need to fly all over here again. There's also a waystone up here and I thought about using this area here in general as maybe a sort of mining area because we don't have a mine set up yet and maybe this will come in one of the next episodes. So let me get rid of a bunch of trees so we can set up logging with create in this area. All right, I think this should be enough space for a nice little logging farm. I also dug some space behind here so we can maybe place some tents for our workers. But then they can get the logging done here. And like I said, we will transport the logs down this river over to this area here. But for now, let me place down the waste stone I brought. This will be our logging camp. If you have any ideas about naming, um, for now everything that has just these uh, dashes in front of in the back, these will be uh, all these can be renamed and until then let's see what we need to yeah get some trees and a few minutes later you can see there are some saplings planted around here so we have some dark oak spruce some of these um, I forgot how they're called. Um, blackwood? Blackwood. Um, oak and acacia for the moment. But these saplings can be exchanged for others very easily. Below here you can see a lot of uh, shafts and cogwheels and things. So what happens is after a tree is cut down, the saplings will make their way up to this vault here behind the funnels and then we have five depots where the saplings get put out and then we have the deployers 
uh, on top here getting the saplings via these mechanical arms. We have one here, which is currently just feeding the four deployers for the dark oak. And we have um, four depots and four deployers around here. And this other mechanical arm. All powered by this one large water wheel. And all of this is, yeah, neatly underground. Down here we do have two brass tunnels, um, logs and saplings and sticks and everything else will come down here and only the logs will continue on this belt into this vault and everything else will get um, up here and I'm probably adding one location to delete just everything that we don't need. I need to find out what this is before that, but this shouldn't be an issue. And what I also did is, if I come up here, you can see a vault sticking out from this uh, big peat thingy here, and we do have some elements below that. There is a clutch, a sequenced gear shift and a mechanical bearing. The sequenced gear shift is set to turn 185 degrees to the forward direction and then turn backward the same amount. And the mechanical bearing is set to only place when anchor is destroyed. So, yeah, probably never ever stop being a contraption. So this portable storage interface can connect to this one. And now I have a few sh shoots here, which I can just place below this. So everything that is harvested just gets dropped below. Now let me get some bone meal and I'll show you how this looks in action and I'll be right back. I just bone mealed all of the trees, so we now have a little bit of, um, hey, not nice. So we have a little bit of forest here, and what I can do now is for now just manually press this button, and this contraption with all its saws will come out and cut everything down. And it goes back. Hmm. And it goes in the wrong way. I need to think about this. This is not what I wanted. Um. It doesn't take in the... Oh, God. All right, a few minutes later and we have a new solution. So, I replaced the sequenced gear shift with a normal gear shift. And now we do have a new block I didn't use before, which is a redstone contact. There is a one redstone contact combined with this contraption and it does react with other redstone contacts by giving up a redstone pulse as it moves above this one or above the one here at the end. Oh, and there's going. And you can see it's going for half a circle. We'll stop there and turn around and come back into its little hole here where it just snaps back into the position. Down here we have a bit of redstone. We have some redstone links, which are connected to the redstone contacts over there and over there. And we do have some powered toggle latches, which control the clutch and the gear shift. So it actually does what it is supposed to do. Now everything that is left is to cover everything up. 
And after another few minutes, we now have our small logging camp completed with a tent, a little cooking station, and of course a few torches to keep the evil at bay. And we can only see our structure now when it's actually coming out to harvest the trees. Otherwise, it's well hidden inside the mountain. This small structure here should generate us a good few blocks. Um, let me see if I can find the entrance to the storage area, which is here. At the moment, we're just sitting at 33 dark oak logs and 26 spruce. But soon we will have a few more as I'm going to chunk load this area so that we can get what we need. And at this point, I think it's about time to wrap up this episode. Um, next episode, we will continue moving our locks down the stream towards the ocean and see if we can build a ship to transport everything back to our main storage. But I need to edit this video and get it out so that you can see it in the first place. So I'll see you in the next episode with some more create and some more yeah, Victorian history. See you soon.